the day, we're going to learn how to motion track inside of Nuke for the absolute beginner. If you like this style of content, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I also have a Patreon if you're interested in giving more to the channel. Anyways, like all my tutorials, you can find the footage in the description below, so go ahead and download that. Then we're going to go ahead and launch Nuke. Now, if you're working in Nuke non-commercial, you're going to go ahead and have to render out an image sequence of the video just to import that into Nuke. But since I'm using Nuke X, we can go ahead and hit R to read in our footage. So here's my footage. I'm just going to click that and hit open. Uh, now you can see down here, if we view our file, uh, you can see that we have a UHD 4K file. So like always, we need to hit S, go into the project settings, and then come down to the full size format and make sure it matches. So UHD 4K right here. And then the FPS, you also have to match. And you can do that by coming to the video clip, right clicking, go to properties, and then you want to go to details and see the frame rate. Uh, we shot in a uh, 29.97 frames per second. So we're going to go ahead and hit cancel. Come back out to here and we're just going to type in that frame rate. So 29.97 like that. Now you can see that we have a super large clip. Uh, it goes all the way into the thousands of frames. Uh, for the sake of our tutorial, I'm just going to work in the uh, 250 frame range. You can see that that's automatically set that there. Um, so now we can go ahead and uh, close all of our nodes and get ready to camera track. Now let's go ahead and hit tab to add a new node. I'm going to look up the camera tracker node. And we can see that we have uh, this new node. So we can just uh, connect the source to our clip and then view our camera tracker. So if you actually camera tracked inside of Blender before, you'll notice that a lot of this is kind of the same things, but uh, looks a little bit different. So what we want to do is uh, we have our window up here. We want to go ahead and set some tracker markers. We're going to let Nuke automatically track our uh, scene for us since we don't have to do any manual labor. So what we want to do is come over here to the settings, first of all, uh, because we can't actually see our tracks. We want to preview our features just to uh, see what uh, Nuke is actually trying to select for our features. You can see that we actually have some X's. Those are actually our tracking markers. So first thing that we need to do is actually go ahead and set the number of trackers in our scene. Uh, by default, it's set to 150, but I actually like to increase that to 300 just to have a lot more information. Uh, also, uh, since we doubled the amount of features, I like to half uh, the feature separation. So let's just go and uh, make this to six. And then uh, by default, uh, your refined feature locations should be off. And uh, we actually want to change that on. Uh, so all those are looking good for now. Okay, so now let's actually start to camera track our footage. I'm going to come back out here to the camera tracker node. And then uh, we want to set our range instead of input. Input is basically going to take the frame range of whatever we set to be our source clip. And so that's going to be the thousand, uh, you know, whatever number that we had set earlier. Instead, we want it to be global. And that's actually going to use our one to two uh, fifty frame range down here. And so now all we need to do is let uh, Nuke do all the work and hit track. Now, the nice thing about Nuke's camera tracker is it will actually track all the footage forward. And then, uh, unlike Blender, it actually tracks the footage backwards again to double check itself and make sure that the trackers are all lined up. This is something that I kind of automatically do inside of Blender, uh, but Nuke uh, basically does it for me and takes a lot of the heavy work away from me. So as you can see, now that we've gotten to 50% uh, on our tracker, we can see that uh, Bl uh, Nuke is actually going back backwards now and double checking all of the tracks to make sure that the position is correct uh, in between the frames. So we're just going to let that track and I'll come back after that. Okay, so we just finished tracking the scene and just like in Blender, uh, we need to actually go ahead and solve our camera. So I'm going to hit the solve button right below where we press track. And so that should take uh, pretty fast. You can see that we uh, have some markers that weren't really tracked up here. You can see. And then we also have uh, one that was actually rejected by uh, Nuke. So what we can go ahead and do is come to the auto track section. And then we want to go ahead and delete the rejected. So that will actually delete the uh, red uh, points before. And then we also need to delete the unsolved, which are these uh, little X's up here. So let's go ahead and delete those. Hit yes. And then that gets rid of all the uh, unwanted markers in our scene. Uh, and so now you can actually see that we have a solve error up here, uh, 1.87, just like in Blender, uh, we have that solve error. Uh, we want to go ahead and refine our solve. So I'm just going to refine all of this. 
that should uh, help a little bit with it. But we want to try to get this solve error as low as possible. Uh, so what we can do is come down here. We have two things, the max track error and the max error. Uh, basically, as I know, this is uh, the max error is taking each track and basically the highest error it ever reaches is uh, that number. And then the max track error is basically the average error of the track. Blender actually only uses uh, the max track error, but Nuke lets us decide which one we want to actually decrease. So what I like doing is going ahead and decreasing the max error down a little bit because we don't want big jumps in our frames. Um, so say one frame is tracked uh, pretty solid and then we uh, all of a sudden have a jump, it's actually going to throw off our um, solve error. So let's go ahead and select that. Uh, we can see that it's selected some over here. We want to go ahead and delete those rejected ones. Hit yes again. And then we just want to kind of repeat the process, try to get the solve error down. So now that we have our max error down to a pretty high threshold, uh, 6 is pretty uh, pretty good range for it to be in, we actually want to decrease the max track error. And so when I decrease this, you can see it's selecting some over here. We don't want too many uh, to be deleted uh, since we still want a lot of data in our scene. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these. So again, delete rejected and hit yes. And so now we can see our solver is uh, gotten lower to a 1.16. And so uh, we can actually go ahead and do this a couple more times to try to refine our um, solve as much as possible. The only thing that you want to make sure of is to not have uh, too few of markers throughout your scene. You can see, still see that we have a ton of markers throughout our scene. Uh, a thing that actually helps is if you come over here and you can play around with some of these graphs. Uh, you can see that this is our error max. Um, so right there. So this is basically just a graph of where we can see all of our errors. And so what I'm going to do is if I come down here, we can notice that a lot of our errors are still uh, pretty high, pretty high above uh, the one threshold. So I'm going to uh, decrease this a little bit. Like there, uh, we can go ahead and delete those rejected. And I also want to go ahead and uh, bring down our max error to get some of those out. So let's do that, delete rejected. Now we have a below a uh, one pixel range for our solver. So let's refine our solve one final time and then we can go ahead and deal with the 3D stuff on our scene. We can see we've uh, gotten it down a little bit more. Let's go ahead and delete the rejected one last time to get some of these out of there. And so now what we need to do is actually go ahead and set up a scene inside of Nuke uh, to act as our camera track scene. So what we can do is come back out to the camera tracker setting. We're going to unclick both of these boxes. Basically, the new beta is uh, something that they're testing out with their 3D uh, kind of setup. Uh, I don't really like where it's at at the moment, um, but in the future, if that does change, of course, check that. And also link output is basically going to whatever we create here, which is going to be a scene, it'll link that output. So whatever changes we make into our camera tracker node is actually going to automatically update. I don't really like that Nuke does that. I find that uh, it kind of gets in the way of my organization of the scene. And also, um, just any time that I need to make changes, I can always come back here and create a brand new one uh, automatically uh, by myself. So I like to have that control. But you can, of course, play around with that if you want. So what I'm going to do is uh, select camera and we're going to do, we're just going to make a new scene and create that. And you can see down here in our nodes, uh, it's actually created uh, these three nodes. So a new scene node, a camera tracker uh, point cloud node, which we don't actually need. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. I never really use that. Um, but you can see over here, we now have two circle nodes and all these circle nodes are, are basically the 3D uh, section of Nuke. Now, I'm not going to really go too into depth about the 3D side of Nuke uh, since that will be a whole another tutorial later. Uh, but the main thing that we need to know right now is uh, go ahead and hit tab. We're going to add in a scanline render, the 3D classic, and just put, plug that there. Plug the camera section in there and then the uh, objects and scene into there. And then our background, we can go ahead and make our footage. And now if we view that and come up here and hit tab, uh, we can actually see that we do have our camera uh, tracked in the scene uh, with all of our uh, points. Now, one thing that I want to call attention to, if you do hit tab again, you can see that our points are kind of randomly thrown uh, everywhere. Uh, we have a general idea of where the floor is, and it's actually done a pretty good job of trying to automatically orientate that. Uh, but we want to go ahead and set what our ground plane is inside of uh, 
um, nuke itself. So let's come back out to the camera tracker node. I'm just going to view that again by hitting one. And then what we can go ahead and do is let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see is we want to go ahead and define our uh, ground plane. And so to, to do that, we're just going to come kind of at the start of our footage and select all the points on the ground where um, the, the ground would actually be. So maybe some of this stuff. Uh, we want to be careful because some of this stuff might be raised off the ground and that might throw a uh, nuke off a little bit. So with all those selected now, I'm just going to right click ground plane and set to selected. And then I'm just going to come, you know, every 50 frames or so and kind of just select any new points that come around. Um, and Nuke will do a good job of trying to guesstimate the rest, but uh, I just like kind of manually doing that as much as possible. Uh, just trying to get as many markers uh, manually set to be our ground plane as we can just to uh, kind of get the, you know, automatic error out. Um, so set to selected and then 200 looks like it got all the points there and then at the very end of our footage let's just see okay so it looks like we got a, a good chunk of the actual floor points so what we can do is since we've already exported out a scene inside of a uh, nuke um, and we didn't we unchecked the link output it actually didn't update uh, update anything over here and that's what I like to do so now that we've changed some stuff uh, inside of here the only thing that we really need to change is uh, the camera because the camera carries all the data with it so what we need to do is go ahead delete the camera over here and we're gonna come back here instead of scene we're gonna set it to camera and then just create that and that's created a brand new camera that has all of our new data in it so we can just set the camera there. I like setting the camera also to my scene over here. Uh, and so now if we view that, we can see um, if we come hit tab again to go into the 3D section, you can see that that's uh, done a much better job of setting our ground plane and all those pink dots are basically all the uh, points that uh, we told Nuke that are our ground plane. And so that is pretty much it of uh, new camera tracking uh, to go one step further if you actually want to go ahead and uh, you know export this out let's say we want to export an FBX uh, file to use in another program uh, I can quickly show you how to do that now keep in mind that every single program uses a different scale um, for their actual scene so if for whatever reason you ever need to change the scale of the entire scene what you can actually do is come to the camera tracker and then we're gonna go to the settings uh, sorry, actually scene over here, and then we have this universal uh, uniform scale. And so I find for Blender that uh, the scale is super low. And so I'm going to set mine to 100 like that. So we just have a huge scene. Uh, again, we need to change our camera. So I'm going to delete the camera, go to that, create that. And that should have updated uh, everything that it needs to. Um, so you can see it's basically a hundred times larger. And so now what we need to do to actually render out an FBX is to go ahead and add a right, uh, geo node. So right here, and then plug that into the scene, uh, and make sure your camera is plugged, uh, into that scene, uh, because whatever we plug into the scene, if you have any other, um, like, you know, cards, uh, which is basically just a plane or even like a cube like that. Uh, if you have any of those inside of the scene, that will also be exported as an FBX. So what I actually am going to do just real quick is add a key, uh, card right here. And then if we zoom in, we can see it's kind of orientated weird. Uh, we're going to set the orientation to be uh, ZX like that. So it's actually on the floor plane. And I'm going to hit, um, I believe it's uh, R to scale that up a bit. I'm just going to scale that up uh, so we can see it inside of Blender. Um, so that is looking all good. Let's go ahead and um, make sure everything is connected. Okay, so what we want to do is go ahead and set the file type to be FBX. I just find that FBX is kind of the most standard uh, file format uh, for a lot of programs. And we want to come up here and save it in a uh, new location. Uh, at the very end, we do want to make sure we type in .fbx uh, just to make sure it saves it as that X, uh, FBX file. And then hit open and we can go ahead and execute that um, we do want to make sure our frame range is uh, correct it might set it to input uh, we just want to make sure it's on global so um, the 1 to 250 like we had set up at the beginning of our uh, scene and then hit ok and it should render out uh, the fbx
Okay, so now let's actually demonstrate how uh, how it works inside of other programs. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a default scene inside Blender. Just going to hit A to select everything and delete that. And then we can go up to File, Import, and a FVX file. And then we're just going to uh, locate wherever we save that right here. And then we can just import that in. And you can see, like I said, uh, Blender uses a different scaling method than uh, Nuke. So it's actually super, super small. So what I'm actually going to do is go ahead and shift a add a empty plane axis. Just going to select all of our objects that uh, it made and then are empty and then control P set parent to object. Just select our empty and uh, I can just, you know, size scale that up a little bit. Maybe even come over here to that, go to viewports display, and then uh, make our size a little bit better. So now you can see that our uh, basic camera track is inside of Blender. Uh, the floor plane is, again, on the uh, floor plane of Blender, so that's very nice. Uh, let's go ahead and set the background image, just so we can see. So background image, movie clip. Okay, so open that clip up. Again, this isn't a Blender tutorial. I'm just kind of demonstrating this to show that the camera uh, has tracked and we can use it in separate programs. So now say I want to, you know, put a cube in the background over here. Um, we can just hide uh, this ground plane for now. You can see that uh, with Nuke, we've actually gotten a pretty good camera track um, inside of Blender and uh, we can go from there. Okay guys, that is the Nuke camera tracking workflow. Hope you learned a thing or two. I am working on a Nuke tutorial series, so just stay tuned for that. I'm getting everything prepped and ready to go. Make sure to like and subscribe if that sounds like something that you would like to see. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next tutorial.